Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Welcome you all in lecture 17. This is inshallah the last lecture of this developmental chapter. I try my best inshallah to finish this uh, example. Okay. Because in this lecture 17 inshallah we will, we will cover this example. And uh, Basically, this example is also related with the uh, cut up points and development lengths. Okay, and uh, the previous in the previous lecture, which was lecture 17, lecture 16, we deal with splices. Okay, so in that lecture, we know about uh, tension splices as well as compression splices. We see that in tension splices, we have two types of splices. That is uh, class A and class B. Okay, class A is uh, equals to LD, while class B is equals to 1.3 times of LD. Class B is the splices which is almost used everywhere. Okay, and uh, we will use that splices. Okay, so let's see. Comes to example and uh, see what it is demanded and what is given. Okay, we have a uh, we have a continuous T beam having the section shown as in figure carries a factor load. This is factor load, okay. And the span is 22 feet from center to center, okay. Center to center. 16 inch square columns, okay. This is 16 inch square columns. The design has been carried out with the movement coefficients. ACA code section this one okay the design which is done here and as well as design of cut up points will be carried out on the basis of movement coefficients look at the bar cut up points okay for simplicity all the bars will be carried past the points of inflection before cutting them up okay this is uh, the, uh, the the question says that you need to continue the bars up to point of inflection and continue that bar away from cut up inflection for a distance of b at 12 degree. Okay. Except in the case of the positive moment steel in span BC, where the number seven bars uh, will be cut up earlier to illustrate the use of the bar cut up graphs. Okay, for normal wave complete is given. Strengths are this and this one, and you have double leg stirrups, three number three stirrups provided from point five, and this also come uh, comply the SA criteria. So this is you know the elevation or construction of the beam. If you if you want to understand this uh, completely, let's see we have. You know, we have this is this is the plan. Yeah? This is the plan of building, or you can say grids of building. Uh, we almost uh, this is a kind of this is a kind of a section, a part of a plan structure. Okay. Uh, for example, there is columns. Okay, and this is also columns. This is also columns. Okay, and uh, the center from center to center of this column to the center of this column the distance is given that is 22 feet okay so if we if we take the elevation from this side so we see that the this building will be somewhat like this clear this column 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 and this is floor one floor b so this column column and it is continued the columns are continued okay this is putting so basically they select this floor level clear yeah? and are they are drawn there okay so in this floor level you can see that uh, you can see that uh, in this floor level you can see that This is column A, 
okay this which is this one okay this is column b which is this one this is column c which is this one and this is continued there is column d clear and it is also continued in this direction clear uh this is beam okay which is which is this one clear now these beams are basically designed clear and this beam is a t beam continuous beam okay. at mat section you can see that there is three bars okay which is positive bars and at this there the supports you can see that this is t beam and three bars in negative region you can see the overall thickness is 18 inches the effective thickness is 15.5 inch and the flange thickness is 5 inch okay these beams basically okay the distance this line okay the line which which is this one okay and the line which is this one these two beams are placed along this line along this line and the center to center distance between these bars okay the center to center distance between these bars is given is that 12 feet from c to d 12 feet from d to c 12 feet and a to b 12 feet but the length in longitudinal a to b you can say from 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 this distance is center to center distance s you know this distance s 22 feet and the clear distance which is which is represented by ln ln is basically clear distance this is 20 20 feet and 8 inches 20 feet and 8 inches uniform space fence one thing i want to mention you okay these aci co aci coefficient methods is only applied to uniform spans and as well as these beams must be subject Okay, uniformly distributed load, not to the concentrated load. And you should also be remember there will be a little bit variation is acceptable. That is, I almost I think this is equals to 10%. If this man is 10% larger or smaller than this one, this will be acceptable. Similarly, if it is subjected to loading, and this one is also at the loading of this pan is 10% more than or less than. Uh, should not be more than okay. should not be more 10 percent more than or less than this will be acceptable class so uh this is what and you can see the design of stirrups okay that this this is the exterior span okay and this is the exterior part this is the interior span and this b c d are the interior columns class an interior span is this one and this one similarly you see that at the exterior span okay almost there is a less loading and less uh, less loading while the interior columns and interior span there is more greater loading and greater movements so you see that there is two number seven bar okay and this is the exterior negative movement region flat and you see there there is a uh, one number seven bar and two number six bar. There is this is negative region interior movement uh, three number eight bars. Clear. There is one number seven and two number six bar, and there is two number seven and two number six bar. Clear. Negative this this point one two. This is negative cutoff points for exterior span, and this this point and this point is basically. Uh, negative cutoff points for interior span clear. and uh, we will determine the location of this point this point this point which is right over there this these two points right over there this point this point and this point and so on clear so this is a little bit explanation clear that how these will be work out okay let's see comes to the example learner okay you must remember there will be used graphs okay from those from using those graphs you will determine the cutoff points yeah and the graphs are you know as the, these graphs these are moving coefficient graphs 
and you can see that this is 100% bar 100% steel area okay this is 0.9 this is 0.918 this is the steel area ratio okay which is the ratio between the cut up bars to the total steel area okay and we determine that uh, we determine that um, the difference between the the cut up and the total area and we we uh, we select that term let's say that is 0 0.7 0 0.6 we draw that 0 0.6 uh, a line from 0 0.6 to there we select we count this distance that which is how much from this zero this is zero start starts and we select okay uh, we can see this diagram that the positive this is this 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 portion is used for positive movement and this below portion is used for negative movement. Clear? So we, we can see from this diagram, this diagram is basically bending movement and envelope for typical interior span. Okay. This is for interior span and the movement coefficients are given. Okay. Basically in movement coefficient methods we use these coefficients. What are the, these coefficients are? You must know that uh, you must know about these coefficients clap this says minus 1 over 11 basically says that uh, these are the locations of these moving coefficients this is minus 1 over 11 clap this is 1 over 16 there will be positive positive movement and there will be again negative movement that is I think so one over minus one over eleven again okay. minus one over eleven again there is one minus one over eleven again this graph is basically used for interior span and if you comes to for exterior span this is exterior span with exterior support built up integrally with carom moments. This minus 1 is 16, 14, and 10. This is minus 1 over 16. Okay. This is 1 over 14. And this is minus 1 over 10. There. The coefficient means that the movement will be, for example, if I select this point. The moment, the ultimate moment will be at right at this point will be equal to minus 1 over 10 into W U into L N square. L N square. L N is clear span. Similarly, at this mid point, the this this moment will be negative and this moment will be positive. Clear? This will be positive 1 over 14 into W U into L N square. Clear? And similarly, all those coefficients. So you can see there will be somewhat different movement. There will be different movement, negative movement. There is negative movement. This side is also negative movement, and this side is positive movement, and there is different movement. So almost whenever we design on the movement coefficient method, we basically select you know uh, the maximum of this of these two values, and similarly. We will select this one and similarly we will select this one and with this one okay this one will be applied here okay same this is carried on okay so the value which is the steel the steel spacing which we which you get from this moment position will be applied here okay and similarly almost this moment will be greater than this one because this is 14 and this is 16 so we also applied this moment there okay this is for simplicity clear although you can design there will be a little bit greater movement but there will be a little bit uh, smaller smaller movement clear so basically that is designed for these different coefficients clear so this was the explanation of movement coefficient method basically i don't want to waste my this my time on this design because this, this is a proper design which, is, which you can be uh, seen in uh, chapter, chapter 10 there you read this full 
discrimination from that chapter 6 from chapter 7. So here we are basically concerned with cutoff points like that how these cutoff points this point this point this point as well as this point this point okay, this point and this point will be determined okay these are our cutoff points yeah so we will discuss here okay so first of all they select this interior span and they determine okay the location of cutoff points okay and they they use these charts yeah so let's see comes to the block uh, you know you must know that uh, that graph just over there and you must know that this point is basically the inflection point of for positive movement and this point is basically for point of inflection for negative movement and you see from the graphs that this negative point of inflection lies a distance of 0.24 of ln ln basically this distance this class right? and this positive point of inflection lies at a distance of 0 0.146 ln right? so this is this will be our first theoretical point and this will be our second theoretical point but we extend that point right? and they say that you should not need you know this 0 0.595 right? we see that from how from where it's this comes okay this value comes okay now bars will be you know first heading is that structural integrity provision you know i already explained the structural integrity okay in my previous lectures the beam is continuous interior beam design should comply with ac4 for open stirrups you, you must know that there is open stirrups. You see, you see this one. You see this words open stirrups. Open stirrups means that the stirrups which are providing in these beams are open. Open stirrup means the stirrups are not closed. They are in this form. Clear? There is two bars and there are the rest of bars. Clear? So these are open stirrups. Design should comply with that. For open stirrups, this section requires at least one quarter of positive uh, positive movement flexure reinforcement, but not less than two bars be made continuous by class B splices. I already mentioned you that class B splices will be used almost all over all over the area and near the supports, terminating at discontinued ends with the standard hooks. Okay. The span AB, the span for span AB, that is span AB, the two number seven and bars will serve as the continuous style. And span BC and CD will use the two number six bottom bars as structural integrity. You know, the lab splice length can be taken as 1.3 times of LD. This is Class B stirrup, okay, as flies for the number seven bottom bars. Clear? So now we start our design. Determine the positive movement steel cutoff points for a typical interior span BC. Selecting span BC. Clear? Now they are first of all calculating the development lengths for the bottom bars. Clear? So they select table A far. From table A5, as if we see the interior span, in interior span we have one number seven bar and two number six bar. So they cut, you know, number seven bar, okay, and two number six bars are continued, okay, and they just cut only number seven bar. So in number seven bar, basically, uh, they determine now right development then for number seven bar as well as for number six bar okay so what will be the development length okay? what will be the development length for uh, number seven and number six bar okay and it should be noted that table is 
F5. Table F5 is right there. It is the end of that McGregor book. This is table A1. Now these are ACL apps, yeah? graphs and charts which help you in designing club. Yeah? This is table A5 club. Yeah? So table A5 give you the minimum beam width, okay? Which can be, uh, which show that uh, if you provide this minimum width to the beam for number of bars which you are selecting in a beam, will give you sufficient clearance spacing between the bars side cover bottom cover and center to center spacing or clear spacing okay so as we are selecting we have one we have one um, number seven bar and two number six bar so let's say we are selecting we are assuming that we have three number seven bar clear because we cannot uh, select them for different bars Spacing. We just we have just only assumed that we have three number seven bar for the interior space. So this is bar number bar number and comes that we have three number seven bar. That is nine inches. So therefore they say that that from table A5 the minimum web width for two number seven bar, two number seven bar and one number six bar. So we assume we have two number seven bar. We assume that let's say we have three number seven bar. Check for three number seven bar here. Yeah. There. Because the beam width exceeds this value, the bar spacing is at least dB. And uh, we need minimum nine inches width. width. And there we have given 10 inches. So as 10 is more than nine inches, so I, this says that your bar spacing will be okay, which is minimum more than db the clear spacing between the bars will be more than okay if you providing three bars two number seven okay two number seven and one number six so the clear spacing the spacing will be more than db okay similarly the the, the clear spacing this side cover and bottom cover will also be more than db you provide the bars if you select the width of the beam on the basis of table number F5. Yeah. So your bar spacing criteria will be satisfied. And as the strips which is given that is 5 inch center to center, so your ACI minimum code criteria for strips will also be satisfied. And thus you will go to case number one. Clear. Yeah. So this is case number one. Okay, case number two is there is we have two cases case number one case number two for development length so as we have satisfied bar spacing you know side cover bottom cover as well as still criteria satisfied so this is case one so from table a6 we directly select the uh, development length clear this is say add not we go to formulas as we have normal weight concrete and sign e that is the epoxy coating so this is these are uncoated bars that is one so therefore we go to table number a6 clear if you if we comes to table number a6 this is table a6 clear now you can you can directly select the development link from this table okay so we have case number one case number one says that your spacing will must be greater than or equals to dv clear cover bottom cover okay and uh, they must satisfy the ACI minimum code criteria for students so those that satisfied so we have, this is case one we have 60,000 uh, PSI complete and our bar dia is number seven clear so we will determine the development length for number six as well as for number so, if this is number 7 bar and you know we have bottom bars and we have 4000 PSI concrete. So, this is our bottom bars and this will be used for top bars. So, we have bottom bars right? and 4000 concrete. So, we just select 
this 47 and this 37 okay this will be for number 7 6 and this will be for number 7 so let's see there is this is for number 6 and this is for number 7 times diameter of bar okay you must know that this is 37.9 it is it is given uh, ld okay uh, only ld you, you need to multiply this with dv okay you need to this is this one you need to multiply this value will be multiplied with the diameter of bar but it, this ld should not be less than 5 inches now, in any case so you need to multiply dv with this dv is number 6 so multiply number 6 with this one getting this much distance and multiply number 7 diameter with this one you will give number 7 just only multiply 7 by eight, 6 by 8 with this term okay uh, let's see i will check it let's see this is uh Thirty-seven point nine multiply by diameter of uh, diameter of uh, thirty-seven point nine multiply by diameter of number six. So uh, number six diameter will be multiply this term with six and divide it by eight. This is wrong. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven point nine multiply by Six comes out to be this much. Divide by eight gives you twenty-eight point four four. So this is the calculation you see here. Similarly, there you can multiply forty-seven point four multiplied by seven divided by eight gives you forty-one point this much. Plus B splice will be used. Okay, and as LD is this much, so you multiply one point three gives you three point this much this distance. 2.37 multiply by 1.3 gives you 3.08 development link for number 6 and you multiply this 3.46 with 1.3 gives you 4.4944 this is plus B splice which is for uh, this is the development link for number 7 okay and this is this is the development link for number 6 I think so this is clear okay so how we can use table S6 for development link and how splice is calculated you know, we will see it okay so cut up point for one number seven bar bottom bar now if we see here basically there is one number seven and two number six bar so one number seven bar will be cut up so we we need to calculate the location this location and this location okay so where is this location so we comes to the chart this is the chart and from this chart we will determine first of all the steel ratio okay the steel ratio so here you can see the steel ratio cut up one number seven bar when it is no longer needed on each end of the beam a b c plan and extend the remaining two number six bar into supports okay after the number 7 bar is cut off, the remaining A is, is 0 0.8 at square inches. Okay, the remaining and uh, okay, uh, are 0 0.8 at divided by 1.48. Okay, so after the number 7 bar is cut off, you know, what will be the diameter of uh, the persistent area of number 7 bar? You can search there. This one, this young, this this table A one, this is in meter clap. This is in meter. You need to select fourth dimension clap. Here, you know, this is number seven bar. There, number seven bar. Okay you see that its persistent area is 0 0.0 this is, this is its diameter and this is its persistent area 0 0.60 square inches okay 
and number seven bar you see here this is number six bar its diameter is 0 0.75 inches and its construction area is 0 0.44 so if you multiply 0 0.44 with 2 is going give me 0 0.88 and you know 0 0.60 okay so the total area will be the 0 0.88 plus 0 0.60 i think the total area will be plus 0.6 give me 1.48 so i think i want to clear you this 1.48 it is the total area of one number seven and two number six bar one number seven and two number six bar will give you this term one number seven and two number six will give you a steel area of 1.48 square inches clear and one the the cross sectional area of number seven bar okay number seven bar is 0 0.60 okay and the cross sectional area of two number six bar is a is is 0 0.44 so two number six bar area will be equals to 0 0.88 clear now i already mentioned you that this term these fractions which you are see right over this line these this is the ratio of the continued bar to the total sectional area total area total cross sectional area you know at this you as and this in this interior span you are cutting one number seven bar so you just need to subtract the number seven bar area from this total 1.4 add this means that at this cut up point you continue two number six bar so two number six bar gives you this area so this value will be the continued bar area to the total area and total area at this point is 1.48 so just multiply this term you can get this this much 0 0.595 and you drag this point just below you will get this coefficient value and that coefficient value from table there you comes to this graph a file okay for this interior span for this interior span you come you need to come there to select this value that is round about there 0 0.595 round about there and you need to come down okay come down there and this will be your value this one okay so from here you can select okay this is this is the value clear so you just down down below down below and this will be your value clear this will be your value so this is to 0 0.2 clear this is 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 0 0.24 0 0.26 0. Uh, this is 1 2 3 4 5 so 0. Point, I think so this is 0. 0.2 yes uh, so 0. 0.2 this is 0. Point, uh, 0. 0.22 0. 0.24 0. 0.6 the met value of this will be 0. Uh, 0.27 and as you can see this this okay the the point is there and the met value is 7 0 0.27 and this is the half so i think so this is 0 0.278 round about 0 0.2 sorry 0 
0 0.5 because this is the half value so 0.275 okay so you must know that how we select this this value clear so this you can see from graph a1 from figure a1 this occurs at a distance of this much okay this much now you need to multiply ln in this term you know ln ln is the clear span so this is this is the clear span 20 feet and 8 inches gives you this much distance multiply 5.6 at foot okay that will be your first theoretical point for positive reinforcement clear that will be for positive reinforcement this one okay there is the point point one and point two this distance is you know from the face of the support this distance is five point five point two this distance is 5.68 clear 5.68 foot this is the first this is the first theoretical point theoretical cutoff point okay and this is the second theoretical cutoff point clear this is the second theoretical cutoff point so that will be from this space okay 5.68 clear now you need to to get the actual cutoff point. An actual cutoff point, you need to extend this theoretical cutoff point towards the support and this theoretical cutoff point towards the support. So this this is the actual cutoff point. Yeah. Actual cutoff point. Uh, to get the actual cutoff point, you need to extend this theoretical cutoff point for a distance of d or 12 dB or n by 6. Okay. So the the they did this calculation okay they did this calculation you know they just effect for sure they they, they taken d or 12 db so d distance is more than 12 db so you select this distance 15.5 inches mm -hmm. uh, pass the flexure cut up one therefore extend the number seven bar okay 1.29 feet and you subtract Okay, now you subtract from 5.6 H1. Okay, if I draw there, okay, this is the B clear. Uh, you know, this is the bar. Okay, so you can say that this is the theoretical cutoff point. This is the theoretical cutoff point. To get the actual cutoff point, which is this one. This is the actual cutoff point. You know, you need to extend this theoretical cutoff point to this to this point, and that will be equals to d or 12 dB. Okay. So as we know that the distance, that this theoretical cutoff point is is at a distance of 5.68 feet. So this is the actual cutoff point. So you need so to 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 get the actual cutoff point of this point you need to subtract 5.6 at minus 12 dB that is 1.29 this will be the controlling term okay this will not it will give you 4 point something distance 4 feet I think so 3 inches or 10 inches 4 feet and 4 inches 4 feet and 4 inches now this is your required this is your required cutoff point this is your required cutoff point and this distance from the face of the support is 4 feet and 4 inches this is your actual cutoff point and similarly this will be also your actual cutoff point from the face of the support at large is a distance of 4, point of, uh, 4 feet and 4 inches ok 4 feet and 4 inches this is for number seven one number seven bar okay you need to in the interior support b and c this is the interior support you need to cut number seven bar 
from face of the support, the distance of 4 feet 4 inches, and this point here, distance of 4 feet 4 inches. Clear? So, uh, now you first of all extend the actual cutoff point for a distance of shear effect. Now you need to check the anchorage. Okay, you check the this bar which is right over there whether it is extended for a distance of LD or not. Okay, for example, if this is your beam, if this is your beam. And no, this is the steel, okay, which is you know, which is four feet four inches, and from this side it is also four feet four inches. Now, whether this is the maximum moment, maximum moment point. No, this this bar should be extended for a distance of LD to this side and this bar should also extend it for a distance of LD whether this distance is equal to LD or not if this distance is equal to or greater than this LD then anchorage criteria is ok and if this distance is less than LD then anchorage criteria is not ok you must need to extend this bar for a distance of LD yeah. So, uh, as for number 7 bar, the LD at the development length is 1.5 inch. Clearly, the distance from the point of maximum bar stretch at midspan to the end of the bar exceeds this one because this, this, is, this, this distance exceeds. This distance is how much? Uh, you know, the total distance is around about uh, 20. 22 feet, okay, it's around about 22 feet and 8 inches, let's say 22 feet, that is 11 feet. So just, you need to subtract this 4 point minus 4 for 4, so it will give you 7 feet. So you know, 7 feet, 7 feet is more than LD for number 7 bar. Okay. LD of number 7 bar. Because that is, uh, I think so, 41 inches. That is 42 inches. Okay, so this is criteria. Okay. Okay. Now, next check is for uh, for the shear. Okay, we we use this check in uh, the last example we did. Okay, because as you are cutting the bar in a tension zone, so you must need that your two by third by the end should be uh, uh, your your VU, your factor moment at this point should be less than or equal to 2 by 3rd of pi Vn. This is a check. Okay. This check will be used. Okay. We did this check in previous example as well. So, you know, Vn will be the combination of Vc plus Vs. Vc is the shear strength of concrete and Vs is the shear strength of stirrup. Here we we don't need to change the shear strength of this stirrup for uh, the concrete. Okay, so we let's see. We just check it whether this this check is completed, uh, fulfill or not. Okay, so if it is not uh, accomplished, this 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 check is not okay. We just change the stirrup spacing, which which uh, which increase this Vs, and uh, you know overall strength of the sh shear will be increased. So once I check it. It gives you 23.4 caps, and then we determine the VU. Okay, VU at that point. So how you can determine? You know, this is the beam which is subjected to UDL. Okay, that is your loading, and the loading is given. Okay, the loading is given. That is, that is 3.2, 3.2, two checks. Okay, this will be the reaction, and that reaction will be WU. L divided by 2. Clear? So, this reaction will be this one. So, if we assume a section, okay, the distance x, your VU will be this reaction, WU, L divided by 2, 
minus this loading that is w u into x where so taking w u common you know you get w l divided by 2 minus x which is right there is equation this one okay and as you are you are determining the shear at point of actual cutoff point okay you are determining the the you are determining the u at the actual cutoff point this is your actual cutoff point so your x will be 4 feet and 4 inches okay 4 feet and 4 inches so this much 3.2626 into l is 22 it is the clear span okay l n it is l n okay this is l n that will be the clear span so 20.6 round about divided by 2 minus this is 4. 4.33 4.33 3 inch it comes out to be this much so this will give you u clear from this you can get 19.6 okay. clear 19.6 this will be your uh, required share at that point clear this much so as you can see 2 by 3rd 5 even is greater than we use so your criteria is satisfied do not need to any extra steps okay because the criteria is satisfied if it is not satisfied then we uh, provide extra steps clear as we did in previous example so this is the first uh, the first uh, two cutoff points actual cutoff points which we look at clear now we select the next uh, points okay detailing of the remaining positive movement still in span BC now you need to you know you need to uh, as we continue two bars that is two number six bars at C and B you just know that ACI code says that F there is uh, closed stirrups if you are using as here we are using open stirrup if you are closed stirrup you, you are using so you, you can cut the bars right there but if you are not using closed stirrups and you are using open stirrups then you need to continue this and it should be remembered that the, there should be one or third cross section area the whole positive movement steel area will be entered into this support one third okay one fourth sorry one third for simply supported one fourth for for uh for continuous beam you just need to to check the previous uh, example i will explain these diagrams that how much area should be continued and how much area should be discontinued so there you can you can see continuity requires an ACA four section this require that at least two bars and it should be remembered that one fourth of the total positive area it gives number of bars less than two so you, you should select two bars minimum two bars should be entered into the support okay so two bars minimum two bars okay must be extended at least six inches into the support and to the column supports at b and c further the structure integrity requirement in ACI code will require that unless closed bar, this is the point which I want to mention. This is the point. Clear? If you are not using closed stirrups and you are using open stirrups, then you need to continue the bars, not cut the, cut the support or splice the bar. Here we splice the bar, okay, because from the other side there are different size of bars to the supporting columns at B and C. For typical interior beam, this condition is used for interior beam. It is unreasonable to use closed transverse reinforcement here. Here we are not using closed transverse reinforcement. So we will left splice the two number six bars 
with the bottom bars from the adjacent spans at column B. Okay, the lab splice length calculated in step number 2A for number 2 stirrup to number 7 bar and the exterior span AB will be covered and that will be 4.49 feet. Assume that the span CD also has two number 6 bar and the splice length will be for number 6 bar will be 3.08 as we did in step 2A. Okay, these lengths are rounded up to 54 inches and 37 inches. Okay, so you must know. Okay, this diagram as we are continuing two number six bar and this support, two number six bar and this support. Okay, so as the 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 stirrups which is provided there, they are open stirrups. So SA course says that at this support and at this support you cannot cut the bar now, right now okay if you are using closed stirrups you can cut there and you must need to extend this bar for a distance of how much six inch into the supports so as you cannot cut the bar because we are using here open stirrups so we we must need to extend this bar into the other span and we must need to extend this bar into the other span so as if we come to if if we if we comes to this span okay there is two number seven bar and here for this cd span this cd span we assume that these two bar is two number six bar we assume let's say that in this span there is two number six bar so we just have continue these two bars at c we continue this but then we we provide a splice there we provide a splice clear and you know the con the length of this splice will be based on this number seven diameter bar okay not on number six because number seven is more development length or splice length for number seven will be more than number six okay so that is that is 56 inches 50 54 inches and there this if, if you are providing splice so the splice then for this one will be how much let's see we there you can see the splice is provided left splice two number seven bars with two number six bars the, this two are number six splice with number seven and the distance is 16 54 inches clear and there is two number six bar coming from that side and two number six coming from this side this is splice number two and a distance for a distance for a length a left length is 37 inches okay this 37 and this 54 we calculated in step 2a so now we look at these splices we find out this this cut up Point and this cutoff point which lies a distance of 4 feet 4 inches 4 feet 4 inches and this number 7 bar is cut there okay now we did the calculation for the rest of the uh, for the rest of points okay mm. okay I think so now it is clear up to this point clear we start now determining the negative moment steel cutoff for MB and DC span okay now we are interesting to find out you know this DC span we are finding this point the location of this point and this point okay that at how much distance this point lies okay this much distance we are calculating right now but remember this distance will be equals to LD are greater than this distance would be greater than or equal to LD. Yeah. Must be greater than or equal to LD. So now we are interesting to find out this these points. Yeah. This is our next step. Clear. Yeah. So let's see. BC span. Okay. To simplify the calculation detailing in construction. 
all the balls will be extended past the negative moment point of the flag rim and cut off. From figure A1, the negative moment point of inflection is a distance of 0.24 LA. Okay, this is from diagram. Okay, this is from this diagram. This is this is the inflection point for negative moment. And you can see here this 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 point lies a distance of how much? 0 0.1 0 0.24 0.24. This point inflection is 0.24. Okay, so therefore there is a there is a point of inflection okay the negative moment starts there okay it goes there in this way and it again comes in this way flat so this is the point of inflection this point of inflection is at how much distance this distance 0 0.24 ln flat ln ln is this distance flat ln is this distance so you must know about this okay so the bar will be extended the bar the bar will be extended to the point of inflection to the point of inflection and we must need to extend this bar uh, towards uh, towards the support okay towards the support for positive we are uh, sorry beyond the support and positive reinforcement re region we extend the bar towards the support but in negative region we will extend the bar beyond the support clear so uh, we just calculate that distance mm -hmm. 0 0.24 multiply by the clear span you get this 4.96 this is the theoretical cutoff point from the face of the column therefore the pleasure cutoff point will be at a distance of 4.96 okay now development lengths of top bars so sine e will be 1 and lambda will be 1 so this is case 1 because still is criteria satisfied you go to table a6 and you find out the development length for number 6 number 7 and number 8 so you must need to go to the table a6 this one this is the table s6 okay and uh, you need to select okay this case and this is 60,000 okay you have 60,000 you have 60,000 and you have 4,000 4, but you have here top bars okay because you are in negative moment region in negative moment region the bars are used at the top okay so here you can select these two values Okay, this values 49.3, 61.7. Clear. This will be the development length. This one 49.3, 61.7. And for number eight, you need for number eight as well this value because this is from seven to eighteen. So number eight will also 61.7. 61.7. Okay, 61.7, 61.7, 49.3. Multiply it with the diameter of number 6, diameter of number 7, diameter of number 8, 37, 54, 61. This is the length requirement for uh, development length. Now, you know, these these bars are 3 number add. This is number add bar. Okay. So, this bar must be, this, this bar must be extended equals to LD. And that distance is, you know, this is the point of theoretical cutoff point. Okay, this is the theoretical cutoff point. You know, you need to extend this point. You need to extend this point beyond the point of inflection. This is the point of inflection as well, or you can say theoretical cutoff point. You need to extend this point beyond beyond this theoretical point inflection point for a distance of d 12 dB. Okay or you can say ln divided by 16 okay so this will be the controlling criteria just add uh, you need to add 4.96 plus how much d 12 db or ln by 16 ln by 16 1.29 and 1.29 so just you need to add 
4.96 with 1.29 you will get 6.25 so uh, we can say that this distance is right now okay this this is the actual cutoff point it lies the distance of how much it lies the distance of 6.25 this distance is 6.25 feet clear this is the negative you also need to, to do this calculation for this side also okay two number seven and two number six bar. but for simplicity purpose provide the same distance for this side also okay you need to cut these four bars at a distance of how much this distance will also be 6.25 although there will be different but for simplicity purpose for sake of construction you know you can provide this this much because this distance will be more although if, if you calculate okay the development then for these bars because they are uh, smaller size bars and they are larger size so this one will be more than this one so just for sake of simplicity you provide this this distance 6.25 and they did this calculation clear therefore try a cut up point six feet and three inches from the face of the column anchorage criteria anchorage criteria as your ld is 61.7 inches okay the actual bar extension is six foot and three inches which is more than this one okay which is more than in this one so this is adequate okay for negative reinforcement from b to c there is said therefore cut up top bars six feet three inches from the face of column b repeat the calculation at c end and c of span bc the development length of the number seven top bar is 54 inches so this will be open because six feet and three inches is more than 54 inches so you need to provide six feet and three inches as from face of c okay so this is the calculation okay you need if this is the beam okay this is the beam and this is b this is b and this is c so you know you need to continue this bar and you need to continue this bar for a distance of how much for a distance of for a distance of six feet and three inches clear I will start there okay and I will continue the rest of calculation in next lecture because uh, I think uh, up to this point okay it is you must understand okay and the rest of calculation will be continued in lecture and so if you have any question any doubt I welcome